Hi, it's Kernetex here with the next in my long series of videos about um, installing and building early Linux from scratch. So what this turned out to be from what was an initial project, just building the uh, first version of Linux from scratch from 1999 has turned into a much larger project to build um, Linux from scratch versions based on previous versions. So my plan is to go from version one all the way to the latest version, jumping across different versions that meet requirements, which allow uh, the newer version to build. So um, the previous video I built Linux from scratch 5.0, which was built on Linux from scratch 4 as a host, which in turn was built on Linux from scratch 1 as a host. And that in itself was built on SUSE 6.1 as a host. Uh, this time I'll be building Linux from scratch version 6.3 on the previous 5.0 that I built. Now, before I go into any more details um, and cover some information about this build, um, what I'm going to do is to power up the PC um, that I've been building on, which has been a Pentium 233 MMX, and get it compiling because one of the requirements of Linux from scratch 6.3 is that the kernel must be at version 2.6, and um, all the previous versions of Linux from scratch, in fact, I'm pretty sure all the previous versions, um, have been using version 6. Uh, 2.4 of the kernel so it's imperative if you want to carry on using um, Linux from scratch as a host that the kernel gets built or rebuilt at version 2.6 um, otherwise what normally would have happened was you probably grabbed hold of a, a distro that was around at the time um, that had the requirements it probably would have been the easiest way to do it so I'm just going to check to see and make sure that that claim is correct, that the other earlier versions Right, well obviously all the version 6s uh, had and required 2.6 because they're all going to be related. So I've just checked 6.2 on another machine. Um, yeah, 6.1 is the same. And 6.0 is the same as well. So it's because we're coming from version 5.0. I'll just check 5.1.1, which is the last version 5. And where's it gone to? Yeah, version 2.4. So the reason why I'm not going to 6.0 is because I want to jump across uh, versions of Linux from scratch. I don't want to do every single version there is. That would be way too monotonous and probably a bit pointless as well. Um, so yeah, the first entry into a newer Linux from scratch from version 5.x, um, i.e. into version 6.x, requires a updated kernel. So what I'm going to do as usual is to um, secure shell into my server. Um, which allows me to secure shell, or previously it allowed me to telnet into the machine I was working on. Now I can um, secure shell. Um, if you'd watched the previous video, um, I can do SSH P233 into the Pentium 233. And I'll put a root in because there's no other the user on there apart from root. And um, if I do cat etc lfs release, you can see it's version 5.0. And um, you can see that the version the kernel's at is 2.4.22, which is the version that was built with Linux and Scratch 5.0. So what I've got to do is to um, build the new version of um, Linux 2.6 um, and then I've got to configure the system to enable 
LFS5 to boot from that kernel rather than this kernel. So what I think I'll do is I'll start off with fdisk and create a new partition um, because this is going to be appropriate to the new version of 6.3. It's for the 6.3 version. Um, it's probably best to develop it on the new partition that I'm going to be building 6.3 on. Now, I've been creating two gig partitions, which have been uh, more than enough space to um, build uh, the Linux from scratches. I would have thought one gig would have been, even that would have been more than enough. I'm actually going to create a 16 gig partition because um, I'm kind of coming around to the idea of building beyond the Linux from scratch. Um, something I hadn't thought of, but somebody mentioned it um, on one of the videos. That'd be a good idea too. And I kind of thought about it. I thought, mm, yeah, it might be interesting to see what an early one would look like. And it's kind of at a point where Beyond Linux and Scratch has, has been around a little while. It should be fairly mature, but it's still old enough to be um, interesting and different from modern uh, Beyond Linux and Scratches. So. Um, I'm going to create a new partition, which is going to be HDA9, as you can see. And so plus 16 gig. So there it is. I'll write that to disk. And because it's on a working partition table, i.e. that's one I've booted from, um, what I'm going to do now is to reboot so that that gets updated in memory. So I'll just wait for the um, PC to reboot. And like I say, while this is building, I'll, um, it's going to probably take at least half an hour. Um, I'll just sort of talk a little bit about this version of uh, Linux from scratch because it's uh, quite an important version in several different ways. Okay, so it's just booting the kernel now. And in it's got control now. So I should be able to get in there now. So here we are back again. Let's do fdisk minus L again. And there you can see my new partition. So straight away I need to format that. So um, mk, mk to fs minus j because I want to use ext3. And I want to format, make sure I format the right partition. Now another thing is I'll be moving, when, once I've built this kernel, um, it's not something that this machine will probably be able to use. It might be able to, I don't know, but um, I've configured the kernel for the machine I'm going to be working on when I build Linux from scratch 6.3 because um, I've now got a machine that's um, older than the version of 6.3, so um, it should have all the drivers required to um, power that. The drivers in particular, this is, it's going to be on a SATA drive, so it needs that support, um, which isn't in the current kernel. And there's probably other things I can't think of off the top of my head. Oh, the network card, it's got a gigabit Ethernet. In fact, this I did find out when I did version 5.0 that this particular version 2.6, uh, sorry, 2.4.22 uh, does have support for that network card, so that part would have worked, but the previous version, 2.6.19, didn't have support. So generally, uh, there's also going to be uh, better USB support as well, I think. I think, it, um, I think I'm right in saying that the 2.6 supports USB 2, which is what the that system has. Um, although, had it not supported that, I imagine the USB 1 and 1.1 would have worked that the current kernel supports. So I'm next I'm going to modify roots um, bash profile which I did 
previously because um, need to put in several settings there going to be that are going to be reusing. So rather than me having to remember to do these things, um, I'm going to put them in now. Um, so let me just find my notes as to what I put in because I'm bound to forget all of them. Right, the first one's going to be the PS, so I'm going to do export PS1 equals a single quote backslash U at backslash H space backslash W uh, hash, because we're going to be root and a space. And what that does, just changes the prompt so that I can see the username the computer name that I'm on and the directory that I'm in, just so I know I'm exact, sitting in exactly the right terminal, or I'm logged into the right terminal as the right user, and I'm in the right directory. Um, the other things I need to put in are the LFS prefix, so MNT LFS, and what was the other thing? Uh, right, I can't find where I've made these notes, so I'll have to hope it's not, oh there it is there, oh yes the terminal, that's right, the default terminals, it, it doesn't make a problem on the remote terminal, but it, it, if I was to use Vim, on the actual screen without the remote terminal, it would complain about um, the terminal not recognized because the terminal by default would be um, xterm256 color. So I'm just going to change that so that term, in fact, if I, uh, oh, right, where's that? Can't open file for writing. That's interesting. Oh, I know why. Uh, so, as I say, I can't see who I am at the moment, so I'll just do ID the check on the route. Um, and yes, what I've done is I've typed this in wrong. So it should be like that. That's why. So, insert, I'll just paste that back in again. And X, uh, yeah, I was going to show you something actually. Echo dollar term. So the default terminal is X256 color. Um, actually, it does seem to be. Um, Fire hasn't actually complained. So maybe, maybe I don't need to do it anymore then. Um, maybe this version of Vi that came with 5.0 um, can handle to the 256 x term 256 so i won't actually update that um and if it does occur then i can just add it into bash profile so what i'm going to do is i'll source that just to activate it and there you can see now i can see i'm root i'm on a system called lfs 5.0 and i'm in my home directory so now I'm going to make the LFS location so that we can mount the partition. So slash dev slash HDA9, mount that at LFS. Now I'm going to change into LFS, empty drive, and you can see we've got roughly 14 gigs available. And what I'm going to do now is to make a temporary directory to store this work in. Uh, what shall I call it? Um, kern 2.6. Uh, no, let's call it LFS 5.0 v2.6. And I'll change into that. What I've got to do next is to fetch the kernel. Um, what I'll probably do is to download um, all the packages. I don't think I've got the kernel separate. Um, so I need to go to my 
server. And once again, now with um, LFS 6.3 and BLFS 6.3, all the sources are available and mirrors on the internet, and that's going to be the same for all subsequent versions. So they're freely available. Available. It seems like somebody um, had the sense to start storing these, um, whereas the early versions are either impossible or very hard to get hold of. Uh, so I need to change to LFS-1.0 to LFS-1x dot x forward slash LFS 6.3 ok so I'm going to download um, which one do I need now P4 one isn't it download that because I'll need that. I'll download the MD5 sum and I'll download all the packages because I'll need that as well. Now, um, I mentioned this some, uh, LFS 6.3 is quite significant for a number of reasons. Um, perhaps not so important as the previous version. It's the third, well, it's the second um, major release that has um, BLFS uh, follow the version release. So um, 5.0 is the first one that had a BLFS 5.0 and every version released after that um, had a, an associated BLFS. Um, it was only the first version that just had, well, it didn't have a BLFS and there was a generic 1.0 BLFS, I think, for was it version 4? Um, but at that time, the BLFS didn't match the LFS, so obviously it was a bit confusing. That's obviously why they changed the versions of BLFS. Um, more to the point is that 6.3 is the last LFS version that was used um, in the live CD. So if you download the live CD, which you can find links for again on the internet, um, the very last version, I think it's released to 145, I think, um, you'll find that it has all the sources actually on the CD. Um, so you're at, you're able to boot from the LFS 6.3 live CD and use it as a host to build LFS and all the sources are on the disk. Therefore, it's self-contained. You don't need anything else. You wouldn't need, even need an internet connection in theory. Um, and you could uh, build Linux from scratch directly off the live CD. And I have done that, and it is successful. I remember doing it in the past. It is um, a successful way of doing it. Um, so although I'm downloading packages off my server here, um, I can't remember if this is a copy of the packages that I kept myself or if, or if they did ultimately come from the LFS CD, uh, Life CD. Um, so yes, it's, they're, as I say, freely available. So it's just getting there. Um, yeah, while that's downloading, I'll just mention, just talk about a bit more about LFS 6.3. Um, Yes, yeah, so as I mentioned, the last live CD that was released by the Linux from Scratch team was LFS 6.3. So as you mentioned, it's quite a long time ago and perhaps it's a good time to mention now about Linux from Scratch 6.3's release date, which was the 28th of August 2007. So um, I started with Linux from Scratch 1.0. I've done Linux from Scratch 4.0, Linux from Scratch 5.0. And that's uh, obviously a period of just under eight years because the first version was December 1999. So we're coming up to nearly eight years on from um, the initial release. You can see from the front page of the Linux from Scratch manual there on the screen that the manual's looking more or less like the modern manual does. There are still some subtle changes, subtle differences. Um, even the way the manual behaves, behaves just recently in one of the versions, the title bar remains on the screen, which is quite useful. So although you're scrolling down um, the page, the title stays as a banner at the top. So you're always aware uh, of what package you're building. 
just by looking at the top of the main screen. Um, as I said, it was the second main uh, version, 6.x, second main version to have a, um, a sort of proper tracked BLFS version. And another second is that it's the second uh, LFS version to have proper host system requirements. So previously, none of the versions I've covered have had any host system requirements. Um, some of the versions just before 6.3, apart from 6.2, obviously, because that was the first version that had proper, what I call, would call proper host system requirements. Um, the only requirement was a uh, Linux kernel version to be a certain version. So I guess it's probably 6.0 and 6.1 that um, had to be um, kernel version 2.6. But 6.3 is the second one to have a proper requirement on specific versions for certain packages. So that's quite important because I think that's quite key in allowing anybody to build Linux from scratch um, to build it with a greater deal of success uh, or greater deal, a greater chance of um, building it successfully than previously because there's no standards as, as to where to start from and you know in theory I could start from SU 6.3 uh, 6.1 and try to build 5.0 and chances are well I know it wouldn't work um, because either tool chains too old or certain packages are too old and haven't got requirements so the fact that every book from version 6.2 specifies you need these packages at these levels uh, these versions uh, straight away you know that you're going to have no problems in terms of functionality or or capabilities of the software on the host, host system. Um, as I've said, the Linux from Scratch packages as well as the Beyond Linux from Scratch packages are available on the usual um, mirrors such as uh, the Oregon State University, um, the Kent Mirror Service here in the UK um, has got all this stuff and no doubt there's uh, plenty of others I think there's one called matrix as well which is one of the mirrors that the Linux scratch team have published in their um, book as well or on the website I can't remember now it might be in their book um, there's another quite key and important historical um, well not a first it's actually a last because 6.3 is the last Linux from scratch version that can be built on the original 80386 processor. So this is significant because this is a processor that Linus Torvalds, I hope I pronounced his name right, um, wrote his original Linux kernel on um, when he made his announcement that he's writing a kernel and it, you know he's getting in a state to be released and so on. Um, that's the processor he wrote it for. So it's quite significant that due to the fact that GDBC dropped support for um, the 386 in between this version of Linux of Scratch and the next version of Linux of Scratch 6.4, um, it meant that from 6.4 onwards, the um, lowest architecture that you could build it on in terms of the Intel architecture, Intel x86 architecture, uh, was the 486 um, and incidentally Linux, the Linux kernel fo followed suit about a year or so later um, in that, that drop support for 3xx due to some uh, I think it was to due, due to some complex memory functions that the 386 used but um, subsequent processes, processes didn't use um, so although I'm going to be building this kernel on the Pentium um, Let's just do this. Yeah, so I'll be building this on the Pentium. I'm building a kernel that will work on the new machine, which is actually going to be a Pentium 4. So currently on a Pentium 233 MMX, I'm going to be building the kernel to work on a... Um, Right, I can't talk and type at the same same time. If excuse me, yeah, um, it's going to be built for a Pentium 4 
three gigahertz with hyper threading as well. Um, it's a 2M Prescott, so it's from early 2005, so it's just about the right time for this build because, as I said, it's from August 2007. It's reasonably new compared to Linux from Scratch, but it's not so new that there might be some functionality that um, is not supported in the kernel. Um, as I say, Linux from Scratch has specific host requirements. Um, and Linux from scratch 5.0, which is what I'm going to be building on, uh, passes all those requirements except for the kernel 2.6. Um, so I could possibly have jumped maybe another version later on, maybe 6.4 or 6.5 possibly. Um, but I thought 6.3 is quite significant, as I mentioned, in terms of the, uh, the last version that you could build on 3.8.6. Uh, the last version that was available on the live CD, although they didn't release the live CD for that long anyway, uh, which is a bit of a shame because I think that's an ace idea. If you've got, um, you know, a system that you can build, why not have an environment that is guaranteed to work with the build? Um, it's a shame that um, there isn't anybody around that has the time or, or knowledge to do that. I'd, I'd certainly do it if I could... Um, if I had the knowledge, but um, I, I don't have that knowledge, unfortunately. Um, another aspect about what we're doing here is that the kernel for uh, that we're currently running 2.4.22 won't work on the Pentium 4. Uh, as I said, it hasn't got SATA support for one thing, and there's probably other issues. For example, the, the machine I'm going to be working on has got 4 gig of memory. There's a chance that, um, well, it probably would work, actually. Um, but it probably needs to be reconfigured in the kernel to work with 4 gig as opposed to the 64 megabytes that the uh, current Pentium has got. So um, as you see, um, there's a period of about, um, well, the Pentium 233 is roughly two th uh, 1997 to 1998. I'm going to be jumping to a machine from 2005 or so. Um, so that in itself is a jump of about eight years so you see that it's going to be a, a almost quantum leap in terms of um, speed that the process is going to be far in fact i think i've seen it it's probably about 10 times as fast um, the disk is a lot faster obviously i'm going from probably a 66 megahertz parallel ide interface to a one uh, i think it's a 1.5 megabit interface uh, sata interface um, the network's faster. It's a gigabit interface instead of a TX100. Is it TX100? Anyway, the 100 megabit uh, interface. Um, so all all aspects. The memory is going to be faster, obviously, as well. So um, because I think it's DDR. Um, I can't remember if it's DDR2 or just standard DDR on it. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be like I say, probably a quantum leap compared to the Pentium 233. So the compile is going to be done in a lot less time. Um, so I did actually try when I was testing it, I did try compiling the kernel on the Pentium 4, but of course I didn't realise that I can't boot the kernel that came with LFS 5.0 and I ended up having to boot from the live CD anyway to build the kernel. I thought well, that's a bit daft, it's sort of going against the idea of just relying on the Linux, uh, the, the Linux from scratches that I'm building to build the next Linux from scratch. So that's why I've come back to the Pentium 4. It's going to take longer to build, obviously. Um, it's unfortunate, that part of it, but I think it's going to make the whole thing just a little bit more real, a little bit more honest, if you like, because um, it doesn't involve any, any outside help. So as you can see, the speed of this is slow. The disk is slow. The uncompression is slow decompression slow so it should be there very soon and then we can start to attempt to build the kernel um, yeah with the, with the live CD obviously I had to mount all the virtual file systems like the true and everything like that so it's a lot more involved anyway even though it's quicker and of course these packages here I'm going to need them anyway on this disk so um, once we get into building, I'll just move these uh, files into the sources folder and there won't be any more downloading to do at this stage.
So the only great pity is that I can't test this. Well, maybe I could test this uh, kernel on this Pentium 233. I don't know. I'm not sure whether it would work or not. I wouldn't expect it to, but um don't know. Um, but the first test I'll get is when I copy... Um, well, what I'll be doing is I'll be copying all of this disk onto the disk on the Pentium 4. Um, so even though the older Linux from scratches won't work, I should be able to I should be able to boot them by booting a newer kernel. They should still work in that respect. Okay, that's done. 